My talk to, uh, today is going to be about uh, sentinel lymph node mapping and biopsy uh, for early stage oral cavity cancer. So the thought is that in early stage oral cavity cancer, uh, there still is a risk for uh, spread of the cancer from the uh, primary tumor site in the oral cavity, say the tongue or the floor of mouth, uh, to the lymph nodes in the neck. And that risk, even when by clinical examination and radiographic examination shows that there's no lymph nodes present, you can still have disease present in approximately 20% or, or greater of patients. So the traditional therapy for uh, patients in those situations with a certain, and, and sometimes with a certain depth of invasion for the uh, primary tumor, is to go ahead and do an elective neck dissection. And the elective di neck dissection is certainly uh, diagnostic. It gives you the pathology specimen to analyze, and it can be also then therapeutic if you do remove disease. You have up to about 80% of patients who may have an elective neck dissection who, who may not have needed it in the first place. And so the thought is that you can do sentinel lymph node mapping. You can find out which lymph nodes are at highest risk or the first echelon lymph nodes, and then you can remove them. And then that, in that way, you are only looking at a, 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 a sampling of the lymph nodes rather than all of the lymph nodes. The other advantage to this is that the sample of lymph nodes, so if you take out one, two, or three lymph nodes, now you only have, you ha your pathologist can focus on those uh, few lymph nodes. They can do serial step sectioning and actually assess the entire lymph node rather than just assessing a portion of, say, 20, 30, or 40 lymph nodes. Sentinel lymph node mapping and uh, biopsy uh, technology and, and the sort of surgical technique has been well established in melanoma and in breast. So that, that's why it seems to be a useful technique. The Europeans, uh, I think, have the longest sort of track record with it. And so they've had, uh, I think it's become very much standard of care over there. Um, it is uh, used around the world elsewhere. There have certainly been some clinical trials that have been tried and uh, done in the U.S. and in um, uh, other, other countries. But I would say that it has the strongest sort of foothold in Europe. Um, there are new technologies being developed, um, and um, one of the technologies I'm involved with is something called LymphoSeq, or Tilmanicept, and it's a first-in-class uh, receptor-targeted agent. So it has a radio tracer called technetium that it's labeled with, but, it, um, uh, but the actual agent itself actually binds to a specific receptor on uh, immune cells that are found in the lymph, lymph nodes. So it's thought that it can actually be retained in the lymph nodes and then identified more easily. I think uh, trying to get this to work, it, it requires, uh, it's a, it is a multidisciplinary uh, sort of effort, just like the care of uh, head and neck cancer patients. Uh, but certainly you have to have your nuclear medicine uh, colleagues on board uh, because they are the ones who ultimately read uh, the scintigraphy studies or the spec CT studies. But you have to get you know, approval from the hospital to get the, the newly labeled um, agent in. You have to be able to get your patient uh, to the nuclear medicine department and get them injected with this agent uh, prior to the surgery and then have the radi radiology study done so that you can actually uh, know where the lymph node is going to be. It's gaining traction. I think there is certainly a very, it's, a, and it's, it's an attractive alternative to doing an elective uh, neck dissection. But I would caution that it's really for a specific subset of patients. Uh, I think it's also important as it's being adopted that we study it carefully um, rather than simply uh, taking it on board. The nice thing about um, some of the, the new agent, uh, Tilmanicept, is that it actually has an FDA indication in the United States uh, for use in head and neck cancer. But I think even with that indication, it still merits uh, careful study. I think the uh, DeCruz study that was published in the New England Journal recently uh, certainly helps to sort of settle the issue that has existed for a long time about elective neck dissection versus therapeutic neck dissection. Now the question of elective neck dissection versus sentinel lymph node, I think, uh, deserves the same kind of sort of carefully designed study to sort of address um, the, the, the differences between the two approaches.